Welcome to DrivenMavens.com. My name is Arvind and on this episode or this video we're going to do a quick demonstration on how to uh, apply reflections to the window of a car. And there's a lot of uh, ideas out there and I know that the, the techniques that I'm using is, is really um, a, a very heavily stylized uh, version uh, rather than getting into the full details and painting everything what we do or what I do is just sort of indicate uh, some of the details so what what happens is that when we look at reflections I, I've got just a, a very quick simple uh, car I didn't really put any time into the sketch or anything and then I've just looked at the, the profile of the window and then looking at the the curvature of the window and what happens often is that when you're looking at reflections depending on on what uh, windows typically what they do or any kind of shiny surfaces like glass uh, or chrome or something like that is that the surfaces are, are basically act like a mirror and they start to reflect the entire environment uh, surrounding it so when you start to look at a car or just look at the car that is in in a particular area especially if it's outside is that the roof line the glass the side panel, the front, back, they're all going to reflect a portion of the environment. So if you've got trees here in the background, well, that's going to reflect off of, off of the car. It's going to reflect off the body, and that's going to show as a very dark, uh, uh, a dark marker is what we typically do to, to indicate what the uh, reflections from the environment are. And the same thing is for the glass. You start to indicate some of the trees or there's a bush. And it all depends on the imagination of the person who's creating the illustration. Because uh, it's infinite, right? You can have trees that are really tall or the car is sitting right next to uh, an area where there's a tree. So then that's going to reflect off of this glass. So it all depends on, on where your imagination is or what you want your car to reflect and making sure that it's not in some way distracting to the viewer. So the other thing that you're going to notice is that when we start doing re or, or creating reflections is that you have to pay attention to the clouds. You got to pay attention to the hues and the sky and, and that's you're going to see all that reflected in these areas where you just have glass. When you get into the body side paint, even though you have very shiny paint, things get a little bit different because the, the different kinds of cars or, or the colors that you have on a car is going to reflect something different. Like black, it's actually very easy. It's almost like a mirror with black because you can almost reflect the entire hue of the sky onto a black car depending on the time of the day and that sort of thing. But I don't want to get into uh, too much detail. What we're going to do is just a quick demo to just kind of show you taking something like this and then looking at the side view of, of a glass and knowing that the section is curved and it's got some uh, crown to it. And so what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to put in, when you're looking at, uh, let's say, just some, some, something like a sunset, you're going to end up having, what I've got right now is just some chalk. Uh, I'll just kind of uh, briefly discuss the tools I'm going to use. I've got something called a jelly roll. It's a white um, gel pencil or a gel pen and I've got uh, some pastels and if you're just starting out by the way it doesn't matter what brand you don't have to go out and buy Rembrandt's and spend like a hundred bucks on 70 pastels just get the basics or something to start with and and by the way this is this is more than enough and this brand uh, something just I just bought from Hobby Lobby they weren't very expensive I think they were like six bucks uh, and, and, and that's and that's enough. Uh, any kind of marker brand that you like, um, this is Spectrum Noir, and I will probably go through a review on Spectrum Noir there. If, if you don't want to spend a lot of money again, uh, then you can get these markers. Uh, they're, they're a pretty good deal, they're refillable, and there's some new ones. These are some uh, older models uh, that uh, the company actually sent to me. Uh, but they've got some newer ones out that have the, the nice brush tip and, and things like that. So what I've got uh, for this is kind of like a beige color. And then I've got a dark gray. And that's all i got. And then I've got some pastels that I've already been mixing up. Uh, so I'm going to start off with some of the lighter tones of the sky. 
and I'm going to apply it. The other thing I, I typically do is I'd, I'd mask this thing off, but I'm very lazy today, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to freestyle it. Freestyle! So here we go. We're going to start applying uh, the, uh, the yellowish orange hues to the side, and I just go work back and forth here making sure that I leave a little bit here because at some point I'm going to show that I've got some this is just a sky tone and then we're going to go darker as we go up higher just think of uh, the good thing for you to do is just to look at some of the reflect or just look at some reference photographs of uh, sunset sunrise and that sort of thing and essentially what's going to happen is that if my sun is way back here it's going to reflect off of some point um, on the glass. So I'm just going to continue on with adding the, the sky tone. And then I'm going to come back with kind of a, a purplish color. And I'm going to go to the top. And I want to try to blend all that stuff in. And I'm going to hopefully see if I can uh, make sure that I don't go past my Stay within the lines here. Stay within the lines! <laughs> okay, and we're going to come back. I'm going to blend some of this back in. I'm going to add a little bit more value to that. So I'm just mixing. You can see I'm just mixing this thing up here. I'm adding a little bit of the red because I want a little bit of that purple. And I just want to go a little bit darker at the top here. The other thing that you see here in the white is actually uh, baby powder. It's uh, talcum powder. So when you add the talcum powder, what it does is it just smooths it out so you don't get something like this. <laughs> so it looks like I didn't add a lot of or enough talcum powder here for this. And you have to sort of work back and forth. This is, I'll add a little bit of orange here to this because you want to make sure you, you, you can kind of blend all these things together. You want a, a smooth gradation, some smooth tones through here. Let me try to get some orange, a little bit of warmth in through there. to take some practice too when you when you first start working with pastels you you don't quite know how to, to work with the medium and so you always uh, take some time to, to get used to that but fear not don't uh, give up you need to just keep uh, being persistent and all this is, is really good as far as uh, for your for your brain, your mind to kind of comprehend and to enjoy this process of learning. Okay, so I blow that off. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this aside so I don't spill all this chalk everywhere. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another sheet, well, I've got another sheet already here at the bottom. By the way, I didn't obviously plan this thing out very well because I was supposed to use some marker paper and I'm using newsprint. Newsprint is one thing I, okay, one thing I do like about newsprint is just with newsprint it's um, it's just really dirty and you, you have an off-white color which is kind of nice that you can use. But it's terrible with blending. So I won't do this again. <laughs> I'm just going to start with, with whatever I got right now and just keep going. 
So, and it bleeds. That's the other thing. So I'm going to, now, I'm going to, I've got this, this beige color, and I'm just going to start to apply this. Uh, indicate this reflection. And why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that we're capturing a little bit of, let me see, this may be drying out because I haven't used this in a while. Let's go with another color here. Okay, it's a little bit better and it's darker, so that's good. So, so basically what I got is I'm just varying it and what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of lightly indicating some sort of environment and just creating some shape and it really doesn't matter you don't have to be very specific in fact if anything you should try to be as random as you can you're just trying to indicate that something is there in the environment maybe it's a tree Be a tree, I'm gonna zoom up here. A tree, bush, whatever. But you want to be able to capture that. And how you typically get some of these ideas is to make sure that you look at the references. So how you have to look at this is look at it from the standpoint that what is the glass, what is reflecting off of the glass? I, we're so busy trying to make sure that everything looks completely accurate and that I get one more color here. We get so caught up in, in the details that we're trying to do that we lose sight of the fact that the main purpose is to really indicate the details. You're trying to replicate the environment. I got some randomness here, so. something we got some tree reflecting off here we got all these darks okay so this is this is okay this is good okay. so when you look at this you can you can sort of tell that we've got something in the environment something is now reflecting off of this the other thing is that you want to you you do want to make sure that you're working pretty quick you don't want to spend a lot of time uh, with markers because what's going to happen is that markers tend to bleed and that's not, you don't want it to start bleeding. The best way to avoid that is to not use what I'm using, which is new sprint. <laughs> so I'm going another, I'm going with another darker value. So this particular marker is a little juicier. So this is causing a problem for me. I forgot, by the way, I just want to make sure I was 
giving a shout out to the person that was um, requesting this. And this is from a YouTube subscriber. His name is Axel. So just want to let Axel know that, hey, I heard you. <laughs> and um, I'm honoring your request here. Okay. Okay. So that's what we got. Now, what's the other thing that we do? We, we can come back here, depending on how good the highlighter pen is, or, or the gel pen, jelly roll. This is now, when you add this highlight, what this highlight is doing is essentially mimicking the sun. It's a hot spot. Now, when you add that, it really brings a lot of now depth to it. You can kind of feel that intensity. And you can do other things here if you, you may want to. I may blend this now back in. Just add a little bit of white through here. When you get into some more advanced techniques, what happens with, with this sort of thing is that you'll realize that you don't really have to use, it's not really white, that all this stuff gets into, this is right now what we're doing is just making sure that we simplify things so that it's, it's you know, the brain can only take so much and you don't want to get too advanced too quickly because it's going to be much more difficult for you to comprehend. And I don't want you to have difficulty at the beginning. The whole point in, in learning, in the learning process, is to start off a little bit smaller and then sort of build up. And that's not going to happen if you try to, the first, if you right off the gate want to do the most advanced techniques, because that's why you don't get results, because you have to sort of build up to that. Okay, so I've got that, and now I'm going to add, if I can, this may not do a very good job now that I've gone over it, so we'll try it again. So I can go back and, and probably blend some more of this stuff and make sure that it was it was good but uh, so hopefully when you look at this uh, you, you can sort of see the dynamic of what's what's happening here is that you're trying to create the illusion you're trying to create the illusion of 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 trees and the environment that is reflecting off of this window So if you try this, make sure you, you try this uh, using <laughs> using marker paper. Uh, don't use this print like I've done here. But I uh, hope, hope you guys enjoyed this and it made sense. And uh, we'll see you next time. DrivenMavens.com. Have a good one.